Hi everyone, so now that we have the current time showing up correctly um, at the bottom of our website, um, now I'm going to show you guys how to use a button in HTML and tie that to code in JavaScript to get that button to actually do something. Um, and if you watched the last video, you may have noticed that at the very bottom here, um, originally it was saying 1.29 a.m., um, and that was incorrect. So if you go back into the JavaScript, um, what I wound up doing was I put this if hours greater than or equal to 12, change the period to p.m., else put the period at a.m. That needs to be put before the if statement that changes your hour to um, whatever your hour is minus 12. Otherwise, it will always be a.m. Um, so that was just something that was wrong with the last video. But anyway, so if we go back, um, we're going to want to add a button here. And that button is going to go right underneath the current time is 129. And it's going to say, it's going to, when we click it, it's going to hide the current time. Um, so it's not really that exciting of something to do, but you can make your button do a lot, um, something much cooler. Um, this is just really quick for a video. All right, so right after the footer, I'm going to throw in a button tag. So the button tag is just button. Um, and then inside of our button tag, we are going to need to tie our button to an event that happens. So one event that um, you can use in JavaScript is called onClick. So onClick is a keyword here that means that if you click a button, something's going to happen. So just like in Scratch or MIT App Inventor, if you said like when green flag is clicked or when um, button click or something like that, that's an event handler. So it's the same idea in JavaScript. Um, and then I'm going to say on click is equal to, um, and let's say, uh, call it hide time. Um, so it's going to be tied to a method or a function that you write inside of your JavaScript. Now, right now, we don't have that function completed yet, but when we do, it's going to reference that. Um, after that, you can close the button tag. Then you're going to write what you actually want on the button. So I'm going to say hide time, and then I'm going to close the button tag. So it's going to give that as an option for me, and then I'm going to run this. And we can see there's a button down here, and it says hide time. Now, right now I'm going to get an error because there is no function called hide time yet. We haven't written it, so nothing's going to happen when I click it. Okay, so now that I have my HTML um, framework set up, now I'm going to go into JavaScript, and I'm going to need this hide time function. So the way that we make a function in JavaScript is you're going to literally type the word function. And then what are we going to call the function? We're going to call it hide time. So instead of using indentation, JavaScript just uses curly brackets. So just like we did for if statements, you're going to use curly brackets um, to put everything that's inside the function inside these curly brackets. Now, notice that it indents for you, but that's just so that it looks nice. Um, so indentation doesn't matter in JavaScript, um, which is actually really similar to Java. Curly brackets are one thing that's um, similar between the two languages. So inside this function, we are going to want to take this whole line of text, document.getElementById. The ID for the footer was F. So I'm just going to paste this here. But instead of setting it equal to this whole line of text, which we had before, I'm just going to set it equal to nothing because I want to hide it. So when we run this and then we check the website, when we click hide time, it's gone. Okay, so that's great. Now you might want to change this button so that it's like hide time versus show time, something like that. Um, so if you did something like that, you could say hide time. Um, and then in the index, you could, instead of saying hide time, you could do hide 
show time, something like that. And then here you could do hide slash show time. And then in here, you're going to change it to hide show time. And then you can set a flag variable up here. So before the function, say let uh, show equals, and let's say true, because originally it was true. Um, and then we can say something like if show equals equals true, uh, then we can put this in, we can hide it. Um, but otherwise, we'll set it back to the original. And so if show is equal to true, we're going to hide it. And then we're going to set show equal to false. Um, so that now, once we hide it, then it's not being shown. And if it's not being shown, then the next time we click this button, then it will show it because it's going to be false. So then it's going to go to this else and then it's going to show it. So now if we run this, let's see how this works. So we go to hide show time. And then it goes back and forth between the hiding and the showing, except it doesn't continue to happen. And that is because after this else, we need to set show back to true, or else it never goes back to true. Um, so let's run it again. And then hide time, show time. Hide the time, show the time. And that's it for buttons.